screwy doctrine flying around it. Because someone nicknamed it the first act of obedience. And I love that person. Because they make me sound like a really smart preacher when I say stuff like that. I sound like I'm really saying something important when I go, baptism is the first act of obedience. Damn it. Because... I sound like I'm saying something that's right out of the Bible. It's not right out of the Bible. Well, it was Jesus' first act of obedience. Oh, hockey puck it was. That's not true. That was not his first act of obedience. I'll need a bug if someone can tell me what Jesus' first act of obedience was. And if someone really gets it right, I'll need a gummy bug. But it'll look real. Seriously. Jesus' first act of obedience took place before the Bible was ever written. It was when God said to that part of himself that we know as Jesus, will you save these people for me? That was his first act of obedience. And you know what? All of it was one act of obedience for him. Just one act. Jesus did one thing. Someone's going to argue, didn't he do a million things while he was doing one thing? Yeah, but it was one act of obedience made up of zillions and zillions and zillions of seconds of obedience. Jesus was the example of perfect, never-ending, ceaseless, flawless obedience. And one of his actions was being baptized. But it wasn't the first and if you do the math on the theology of baptism and salvation being linked, everything is all screwy again. Because Jesus got baptized, and then he got filled with the Spirit, and then he started his ministry. When did Jesus have time to receive Jesus as his Lord and Savior and get baptized? It never happened. He didn't have to. He was walking in the truth and knowledge of who he was from start to finish. And everything he did happened when it happened for the reason it did. And it was never meant to be pointed, as, pointed at as some kind of perfect chronological order that if you screw it up, you screw up people's eternal placement. In other words, at some point in your Christian walk, you need to be obedient around baptism. You need to be obedient around baptism of the Holy Spirit. That's for another night. However, it's always good, it is always good when looking at doctrine and theology, it is always good to look at history. And whoever came up with baptism is the first act of obedience did Christianity a service because he put a little pressure on Christians to get around to getting baptized sooner than later. Now, of course, all of the new Christians after Jesus got baptized within usually within minutes of getting saved. They were also surrounded by water and they were used to being in water every day. <laughs> but when Jesus got baptized in the Spirit, when Jesus got baptized in water, excuse me, he was immediately baptized in the Spirit. Now there's someone running around preaching saying, if you are obedient to the first act of obedience, God will fill you with his Spirit. That is not doctrine, that's not true. However, God bless him. He's doing Christianity a service because he's training a group of people throughout history to believe that if they get baptized in water, they should expect being baptized in the Spirit. And it certainly would be easier for the rest of us if the rest of everyone else were baptized in water and baptized in the Spirit and walking in obedience and we didn't have to preach so much. It would be a hell of a lot easier. However, Jesus was baptized. That did happen. And whatever anyone's belief system is around the urgency of timing of baptism or what baptism will buy you in heaven or on earth, either by your salvation or by the Spirit or by 
winning over your friends or setting an example, whatever it is, there's one undeniable truth. Jesus was baptized. Jesus did it. The only person in history that never ever had to make a point of separating himself from his sinful past said, baptize me. He didn't go first. He didn't go second. He didn't go last. He just was one of the people who did it. The best reason, the best reason for every single believing Christian to get baptized is that Jesus did it. What if everyone thought eating candy was stupid and didn't do it? And someone said, Jesus ate candy, therefore you eat candy. Well, what am I going to get for it? Oh, man. I don't even know how to describe what you're going to get for it. I have no idea. I wouldn't, how would you describe someone? I met someone who never had ice cream, an adult who had never had ice cream. How on earth do you describe ice cream? Because ice cream is what you compare other stuff to. You know, seriously, you can't even fathom it. Anyone that's gone to an oxygen bar, how do you describe what it's like to have pure oxygen when you've been breathing your whole life? It's really hard to explain. It's kind of like going to hookah lounge, but better. And, uh, and you don't get like two packs of cigarettes in your lungs in five minutes. But <clears throat> Jesus set a standard of obedience by existing. He set a standard of obedience by becoming flesh. He set a standard of obedience by being a baby who pooped himself when he was God Almighty. Jesus set an example by being God and getting circumcised. Jesus set an example just by living and breathing for 33 years. But he set a standard of obedience throughout all of his life just by living it. And that was his example. His example, and notice how I just keep going back and forth. I'm either saying example or standard or obedience because they're all the same thing. His example was obedience and his obedience was exemplary. And his existence was all of the above without doing miracles. Jesus did more by agreeing with God to become human than he ever did by being human. Jesus did more. That is a theological argument someone will love to have with me. I'm busy. I'm going to be watching So You Think You Could Dance, so you leave me alone. Read your Bible. Look it up online. Gosh, people. <laughs> But bringing this down to earth, people pay a shitload of money to go to the Holy Land to walk where Jesus walked. Okay, I'm a Jew, and I, I, I'm afraid of flying, so I'm not going to do it. But I would really like to go to the Holy Land. I, I would. You know why? Because I love Jew food, and I want to have falafel in Jerusalem. Who cares where Jesus walked? I'm sorry. Oh, I know. Heretic. There's nothing in the Bible that says I should care at all about setting foot on Hebrew soil. Maybe I'm made of Hebrew dirt. Now, that, <laughs> you guys just got that. Okay. <laughs> but seriously, people pay a lot of money to go walk where Christ walked. You know what? You know what he said to Peter about that? He said, oh, you, you think you can walk where I've walked? <laughs> you think you can get baptized with the baptism I've been baptized with? My goodness, I can't wait to see how you do it. Because he looked right at Peter and he knew how Peter was going to end. And historically speaking, the part we can prove, Peter said, no, don't crucify me the way you crucified him. Crucify me upside down. I'm not worthy to be crucified in the same manner as that guy. Jesus looked at him and said, no, you can't handle it. You won't be able to do what I did. You won't be able to do it. Even down to the getting crucified, you will look at it and go, I can't do it. I can't, I can't do anything that Jesus did. So you want to go to Jerusalem and spend 
thousands and thousands of dollars on some really lame tour, like like 